Today on BRS TV, we're going to discuss aquarium monitors and controllers. We'll cover the basic advantages of using them, the recent gain in popularity, and how to select the right model for you. Let's start with monitors. These are super simple pieces of equipment designed to monitor things like pH and ORP. Not many people want to simply monitor ORP, but pH is very popular. Being able to see the pH at a simple glance is very helpful. Most tanks operate between 7.8 and 8.3. If they fall outside that range, there's likely something wrong with the tank or equipment. It's pretty common to take a quick peek at this when you're feeding the fish. If you feed every day at the same time, it should be about the same pH every day at that time. Keep in mind that pH will almost always be higher during the day than it is at night. Next up are standalone controllers. These go a step beyond a monitor and add the ability to control a piece of equipment based on the pH, ORP, temperature, or even leaks. pH controllers are commonly used to control calcium reactors, a fail-safe on auto top-offs that use Kelkwasser, Kelk reactors, or even two-part dosing pumps. Any one of these things can fail and cause serious damage to your tank or even home. In fact, on a long enough timeline, they will all fail, so it's really best to plan for this. ORP controllers are typically used on systems that utilize ozone in a reactor or skimmer. Ozone is sometimes used to break down organics in the tank, which clarifies the water, increases light penetration, reduces toxins, as well as a variety of other things. Temperature controllers are used to turn both chillers and heaters on and off based on the tank's temperature. I'm pretty confident in saying that if heater failure isn't the number one cause of equipment-related tank crashes, it has to be really close. The primary issue is getting stuck on and overheating the tank. A temperature controller will help protect you from these events. Lastly, there are leak controllers as well, like this one meant for RO systems. Basically, all you need to do is put it on the feed line. If the probe ever detects moisture from a leak, it triggers a shutoff and sounds an audible alarm. This is important if your RO system is installed anywhere it would cause damage to your home if it leaked and critical if you have an RO hooked up directly to your tank for top off. This cheap piece of equipment can protect your home and save you a fortune in repairs. All of these standalone controllers are nice because they're really easy to use, but the cost of purchasing them separately can really add up and this is where a true aquarium controller really starts to make sense. Complete aquarium controllers are capable of all these things plus a whole slew of other options and come in a single unit which makes it much more affordable. Aquarium controllers have really transitioned themselves into a really common component of a long-term successful tank by automating tasks and adding system redundancy. Today's controllers are really impressive. Not only do they do the critical steps of controlling pH, ORP, and temperature, but go far beyond that. For example, the Neptune Apex is capable of controlling all of your pumps. This, of course, includes the standard on-off style wavemaker functions, but also more advanced options that give you control over your DC-powered tunes pumps. A controller like this can also control the pumps on your skimmer or return during feeding times, which prevents the food from going down the overflow and can give your corals time to utilize some of the additives you might be using before they go down to the sump or they might be removed by the skimmer or other filtration. There's even a module that wirelessly connects your Ecotech Vortec pumps to provide some added flexibility there as well. The Apex also has a salinity module, which will not only give you real-time updates of the salinity, but more important, it's capable of controlling equipment based on the salinity. For instance, it could turn off your auto top-off if it were ever to fail and get stuck on. There are leak controllers as well. This thin one is designed to slide under your carpet, and the thicker weighted block is designed to go into the sump area. If it detects a leak, it can turn off any single piece of equipment, set off an alarm, and even email or text you. There are a variety of LED fixtures that can utilize the dimming function as well. This list includes Kessel, ACAN lighting, the AI Souls, Rapid LED Onyx, and a lunar module that controls smaller LEDs for a cool nighttime effect that emulates the moon's natural cycle. The dissolved oxygen module even gives you real-time monitoring of the oxygen content of the water. While this is one of the more advanced modules, it would be nice to have when you're using an additive or implementing a new system like biopellets where you know there'll be an initial impact on dissolved oxygen levels. 
All of this comes in a nice tidy package so you can throw out that cord octopus disaster you had with a series of power bars and timers. And rather than look at a handful of different equipment displays, you can find everything on one nice easy to use display. Most controllers programming can be done on the unit itself through the display pad, but many controllers also come with a network connection so they can be programmed wirelessly through a computer. So I think at this point anyone can begin to see the value in owning a controller, but selecting the right one for you can be a bit more difficult. Most of the brands separate their lines into a good, better, best format with three or more packages. For instance, the popular Neptune comes in the Apex, the Apex Lite, as well as the Apex Junior. The primary differences between the Apex Lite and standard Apex is the standard comes with the ability to monitor three probes, temperature, pH, and ORP, as well as some variable voltage outputs for controlling tunes pumps and the LED lights we talked about. The Apex Lite is only capable of monitoring temperature and pH out of the box. However, you can purchase another module to add ORP functionality in the future if you like. It also doesn't come with a pH probe, so you'll have to purchase one or use one you already own. If you consider the price of the probe, these two are not very far off from each other and probably why we sell two to one Apex over Apex lights. However, if you're pretty confident that you'll never want to use ozone or measure ORP, and none of your pump or lighting choices will use the variable voltage, then get the light. Keep in mind this isn't a permanent marriage. You can always upgrade with modules later. It'll just cost more, and you'll have more cords and equipment to mount. The Junior is similar and uses the same software, but it only comes with four outlets and doesn't come with a built-in pH controller. It's also missing some of the other features, like it doesn't have a port for the I.O. breakout box, commonly used in conjunction with float switches to control water levels. More or less, the Junior is designed to control your lights, pumps, heaters, chillers, and similar items. As your budget or needs increase, you can add additional modules for more outlets and things like pH and ORP control, but the Junior does have a limit of five additional modules. Knowing all this should make it a bit easier to select a controller that fits your demands and budget. That wraps up today's episode. This week's question of the week is, has your controller ever protected your tank or home from what would have otherwise been a disaster? Next week, we'll be doing a full episode detailing how to add redundancy to your system using a controller. If you'd like to be notified when that comes out, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching BRS TV.